this is Danny from Danny Design Studio. Thank you so much for joining me again today. We're on day seven of the 12 Days of Christmas series. And if these videos are something you like and would like to see more, then please like and subscribe by pressing the subscribe button at the right hand side of the screen. And then you'll be able to send, be sent notifications of when I upload. So you don't miss anything. Now today we are going to be making this little project. And this is what I call my little cupcake box. And if you look inside, it holds a single cupcake. Now I made this cupcake because I quite like making gifts at Christmas. Um, I make lots of homemade gifts, cookies and Christmas cakes, shortbread and all sorts. And um, so you notice that in a lot of my projects um, in this 12 days of series I'm making boxes and gift boxes, um, gift bags that have hold homemade gifts. And this is the base that uh, the cupcake stands in at the bottom so we're going to show you how to do that so it doesn't roll around. Um, and this type of box, um, this closure is, is not new. Um, it, there's a template that I've got, and, but I've tweaked it so that it will hold a cupcake of mine. So it's got an inner bit as well. So we're gonna make this outer box and this inner box and all these little elements that make up this box so that it's got fits snugly inside and it's got a nice little closure and then you close it with uh, the ribbon. So what I used for this is um, the heartwarming hug series paper. So, which is really lovely. I've used um, the layering circle framelits and the Warm Hugs um, stamp set, which I really love. Um, that is my, my little closure, my little sentiment on the top, which is quite nice. It's just simple, but it goes really well. And these colors, it goes really well with. So, um, so yeah, so let's get started that all aside. Now what you need for your box, I'm going to be using these these papers. Now you've got you need a coordinating colour because this side of the paper you're going to see inside the box. So that's why I've chosen the red inside and the green outside. So this is um, the size of it is 12 by 10. So this is the outside of the box we're making. So that's 12 by 10. And what I'm going to be doing is scoring this. So with the long side at the top, you're going to score at 3, 6 and 9. So just to say the dimensions of the box are three by three by four. So this gives you the height so that if you want, you know, your cupcake may have a um, sort of a creamy top and you want to fit it in. So then you go to the short side and you're scoring at three, six and seven. Now you'll notice that I want to make this box bigger than a 12 by 12. So what I've done is that spare bit that I've cut off from my 12 by 12, you're gonna use this. This is the outside of the box and this is my inside. So I'm just going to to score this so maybe you will see the lines a little bit easier. Quite difficult to see on this patterned paper. I'm 
just scoring with your bone folder. Right, so that is the outside of my box, but I want, because the inside of the, this box is going to be seen just as much as the outside. So this box alone is not big enough. So I need to put a little tab on the, this side. Sorry, this has got a little narrow bit at the top here, your one inch, and that needs to be at the top. So here, I'm going to put a little tab. Now I've got to make that little tab. So I'm gonna get my trimmer and that tab needs to be four by one and a half. Four by one and a half. Now then I need to score on the short side at a half an inch. So I'm gonna score it on my trimmer as I've got it out. That's half. And then on the long side, I'm going to score it at an inch. If I can find it, there we go. So, just pop that to one side. So you can see, if you can see, I have got a little rectangle and another little rectangle and two larger rectangles. Now I want the smaller, the narrower rectangles to line up on here. So my score line is here and that's going to line up with the edge of my paper. Now it's quite important you do this and spend a little bit of time adjusting it because you're going to see that. So you need to make sure that that is flush against the side. Put my little glue on. I've used the wet glue only because I've got a little bit of wiggle room and I need that nicely at the side. So you can see I'm going to line it up really carefully and once I am happy with it and the top I can then press it down. Now before I forget I'm going to cut this bit so this bit, this little tab here, this little score line, I'm going to cut to there. Then I'm going to cut up all these score lines, very difficult to see with all these stripes. I don't know how you're able to see because I'm just about barely seeing it myself. And so you're cutting up these score lines to the first horizontal score line. Or to the first score line, basically. There's only one on this side. Cutting all there. So then you've got this bit. So the second, you've got the tab to the right you've got one, two squares and then you've got another two squares here. So these two squares I'm going to fold in because I don't want to cut those two squares. This is my top and this is my base closure. So then I'm going to cut these up, just notch those in all of these I'm going to go around and notch 
all of these in a little bit. It's quite, it can be quite fiddly because these flaps are quite long and they sort of get in the way. So it's, it's just remembering that these ones you do not want to cut. So you're cutting all the rest. Just giving that all of these a little notch inwards. Right, with these two at the side, these are too big, these flats, so I'm just going to maybe take an inch off all of them. Like that. Keeping these, these square ones out of the way. Helps that it's a different colour, I suppose. So I'm just going to get rid of this. <clears throat> now, you then want to cut, you have got this little inch bit here and you're going to cut up to that last horizontal line here. You're going to cut up that score line. Right up the last horizontal line. So that's what you're left with. So that's your base and that's those other little flaps you're going to then fold in. So this is your little tab that you're going to then glue together here. Yeah. So I'm going to use the wet glue. So the first one is going to go right to the end, like that, and the same with this, just a nice flush line. Right, so you can tell that is your top and that is your base. Then fold these in, these flaps, and the, the main square you want, I'm going to use the Stamp and Seal Plus for this. And then you're going to line it up and you can make sure it's all square meat inside. So then these flaps go in as well. So this bit is going to be, oh, doesn't want to get out of the way. To be quite gentle with the stamp and seal plus because it can sometimes tear the paper. It's so incredibly strong. It is lovely though because I love it 3D projects. So then make sure that's all nice and flush. Now I have just done a little red, um, a real red card just to make that look a bit nicer. And so when you cut that, that card, it's going to be, because that's a three by three, so you're going to do it slightly under, so it'll be 2 and 15 sixteenths times 2 and 15 sixteenths. So it just gives you a nicer finish. So that is the outside box done. I'm going to put, pop that to one side. So now we're going to do the inner box. Um, now I have, I have um, cut this to size, so this is 10 
and 15 sixteenths by 10 and 15 sixteenths, so it's a square. And then I'm going to score at half an inch and four, four inches on all four sides. Half and four. So burnish it first, sorry, forgot to put my mic on so I'm hoping that that first bit worked. So burnish all these sides. These little tabs here is going to form a little lip inside your box, your inner box. Oops, got glue on here. I'm turn that over so it. Otherwise, it might tear. <clears throat> and then sometimes it's easier to see if you can see the crease a bit more on pattern paper. It's so hard to see. So last one yeah so these little little bits of the top here all around is basically your little lip that's going to make your box a bit more sort of um, presentational style so you've got a square here you've then got a little tab here and a little tab here these two little rectangles you don't want so you cut right up to that second horizontal score line. So this is the inside of my box as so I want the box, the inner box to be red and that's the paper on the outside. And I'm just going to notch that in. I just want a little bit off here. And then I'm going to take, these flaps are too big, so I don't want that. And then same here. Same again, basically. Cut it up to that second horizontal score line. Once you've done that, get that out of the way. these inside bits and then cut that bit off slightly. So turn it around again, cut this little inner tab, notch that in at the side, cut that up to the second horizontal fold that back, notch it in again, take a bit off and then fourth corner basically just repeat. Right, so I'm just going to check that I've done all the notching in the right place. I've missed a bit here and here and here and that one. <laughs> just as well I've checked. So that is what you're left with. Now that is the outside of the box. So these bits you want glue on. Now the inside of the box 
these little bits are going to fold over so what I want to do with that is put some tear and tape on ready I'm not going to take take the outer bit off I just want to get it prepared because once you put the sides of your box up it's so hard to put the glue in these little tabby bits so that's all done for when we're ready and then I want some glue on the outside of these tabs and I thought it's easier to have wet glue because it gives me a little bit of time as I said these sides are, are a bit tricky I don't want glue everywhere so I'm going to put my silicone mat down and then I'm going to line it up and line that side up just going to put it all together before I get my bone folder out it's easier to actually stand it on on your surface so you get a good right angle so once I'm happy with all of that I'm going to use the bone folder and make sure make sure it's all nice inside that will take a few seconds to dry properly right so then I'm ready for these bits I'm going to take these off and then fold that in. Take your pick tool, it's handy for so many things. And this tear and tape is one of them. <laughs> and as I said before, it just gives it a nicer finish because if you didn't have this little tab bit at the top, you'll just have the card. You'll just see the card, which isn't as nice, I don't think. It's nice, it's all about presentation in this box. So then, because we've cut that a little bit smaller, it should fit nicely and give us a nice lip so that our box fits snugly in there. And it's a nice presentation, I think. Right, so we need to do the little base so you need um, a piece of card. Now let me just find out that in a stand box is three fifteen sixteenths over th times three fifteen sixteenths. So it's a square, and then you're scoring at a half on all sides. Before you put it into your little stand, I'm using the layering circle framelit dies, not the scalloped bit, just the plain ones. And I'm using this one, which is the two inch one. Now, depending on your cupcake, you have to make sure this is a three by three inch box by four. So your cupcake needs to be less than three inches wide. So this I found for the cupcake that I made, it fits this perfectly. So, what I've done um, is I've just secured that together 
if you haven't got the magnetic plate you can use this little sticky bit to stick it together and need to die cut that out and then you you do the box in the same way so you then cut that up that And then what you're doing is scoring that on each side. And then you're going to put your glue on this little square here, there and there. You're then going to do exactly the same that we have done with all the other boxes so you get your little stand. I'm not going to do it because I've already got one. I did have one. Um, it's probably in the box. I've got one and that goes into your, your box quite snugly. And then you'll fit your little cupcake in it. So the, all we need to do is the outside. So I have then used the warm hug stamp set. I've mounted what I want to do. And I'm using the pear pizzazz and the real red. So I've the bit that I've cut out of the little stand, I'm going to use on the top of my box. So, <clears throat> I think I'm going to use, this one's on me, Merry Christmas. I'm going to just mount that on here and it saves me cutting something else I hope I've got I haven't got my I'm gonna have to pop it down here so I can't see with the lights so then you've got this little lovely decorative piece that I quite like and because these are photopolymer stamps you can see what you're doing which is handy. Now you've then got these little Christmas trees. So I've got the outline of the Christmas tree and the, the colouring in. So I've mounted that on and I'm going to pop that inside. And then this one colours it in basically. I'm going to have to pop that. It may be out of shot, but otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. So that's that. And then what I have done is I've cut out a little piece of real red to mount it on. And that is with the two and a quarter, two and a quarter inch punch, which is here, two and a quarter inch punch. So then I'm going to mount this onto some dimensionals. Just gives it a little bit of decorative bit at the top. You could put a gift tag on it if you want to, but I just think I love these little warm hug sayings. One of my favourite stamp sets. I've used this a lot this year because I just love the sentiments. This one's on me, that, that's what I'm using. Warm hugs to you all season long. Eat, drink and be merry. Eat, drink and be cosy, sorry. And I just think it's just such a lot of fun. So then the last bit is to use some little gems, which I've used this a lot, wonderful gems this year. 
and I'm just going to put, oops, I think that's too big. Something a little on top of the tree. And then maybe a few. Outside. So I'm going to you obviously put your cake in here and then I'm going to put that on first and I'm just going to put it into on one of the corners <coughs> because I want to have my ribbon to one side as well so remember this is the opening so I'm going to put that here <coughs> and then I have got all the trimmings ribbon combo I've got the red one I put the green one on the first box I did but I think the red one sort of complements the green really well on this box it's got these little lovely little gold flecks which I think is so nice and it's just Cute little box. Nice to give to somebody as a pick me up, especially over this this lockdown. I think it's quite sweet. So there we go. I think that's done now. So these two little boxes, cupcake boxes, and I hope you enjoy making them. Thank you very much for joining me again and I hope to see you next week. Happy stamping crafters! If you like this video please click the like button below and please subscribe and select the bell icon to all to receive notifications of when I upload. Thank you!